In my humble opinion, there are two types of jams that are without question superior to the rest. The first one is of course the jelly jam, and the other is a game jam. A game jam is a challenge, a challenge to create a game within a set time period and usually with restrictions in place. As you have guessed, after a year of typing print hello world into the command line, I finally decided to participate in one. This was both a step up for me, and as you shall see, a huge mistake. The Geo Jam hosted by Icoso. This jam lasted one week. A week is more than enough, I thought. So on Friday, I woke up about 15 minutes after the jam started, and the theme was Switch. Uh... And the entire thing about the Geo Jam is that it involves shapes or geometry. I thought about what kind of game I wanted to make for a few hours, with no proper planning, as that's for plebs, and I had eventually stumbled upon this great tutorial. And so it hit me. I'd make a rhythm game that automatically places notes based on the volume of the music, and you'd have to switch between four different shapes in order to destroy them in time with it. That's a great idea, I thought. And so I got started. I followed the tutorial, and modified the end result to instantiate notes at varying rotations based on how loud the audio is. The main reason I set up the system is so that I didn't have to place them by hand or create a charting editor, like a nerd. And look, it actually worked on the first try, wow. But we have a problem. Since I'm working with this system, I need to ensure that the notes reach the arrow positions in time with the music. This can't be done by instantiating notes as soon as the music plays. So I divided the music into two parts. One for audio data, containing the main melody and nothing else, and the other for the actual music the notes are in time with. The way it works is that the melody for the note generation is muted, and the audible music is played after a certain time delay so that the notes and the music are in sync. But the player doesn't hear the melody that's used to instantiate notes, so it's a... Uh, it works, yay. In the game, you play as a shape that needs to destroy notes that are only of its own type. At first I wanted to use the arrow keys to move the player left and right, but uh... You can see that it's quite difficult, and so I changed it entirely so it resembled an actual rhythm game. Cool, and that was pretty much it for day one. On day two, I worked on music, and I made this. It, it, it's really nothing special. After that, I made a note switching system. After a note has been created, a timer starts. And if a note isn't created for that period of time, then the notes switch shape. Oh, and of course, you can change your player's shape too. Awesome. I also added this cool particle effect, and also just this cool camera shake effect. Just for a little polish, so I don't have to do it later. On day three, I added an epic score counter. Here's what I have so far. It's looking pretty bad, actually, but... And day three is the day I started the process of creating a difficulty system. I just did the basics. I divided the note speed by the music's delay, and so when I change the delay in the editor, the lower the delay gets, the faster the notes reach the arrows. And yes, I know that this is absolutely terrible. What I'm doing is basically making the player wait more time for the game to be easy. But whatever, let's move on, let's move on. Wait. Day 4 doesn't exist? Oh. Well, uh... On day 5, I made something that I'm very proud of. Up until now, the notes spawned randomly. The pattern would be different every time you played. I thought that that kind of sucks. And it does. So what I did was code a little thing that reads a text file based on your chosen song. These text files contain integers from 0 to 4. These integers represent the arrows from left to right. And since the game automatically detects the melody, all you have to do is plot down the indexes of the arrows. This is very simple but very easy to work work with. And that's it for day five. Oh, so apparently I forced shut down my computer and I had my Unity scene open and I lost all my progress. Needless to say, I was frustrated. I've worked very hard on this and, uh, well, it really sucked to have everything deleted right when it started coming together perfectly. Now, I used the screenshot from one of my previous recordings as a reference for variables, but in the end, I just couldn't get it to work. Well, not correctly, anyway. I took a break for like five years, I tweaked some values for the millionth time, and you can guess what happened. It worked out of nowhere. That's just about all I did. It was very discouraging. But I managed to convince myself to move on on day 7.
During the week, I didn't really have much time to make music, but at one point, I did manage to put together a stupid little song in reference to one of my second channel videos. I finished the main menu on day 7 and it looks, eh, it looks okay. Well, at least it functions okay. And this was the first time I would be working with save systems. At first I tried implementing a binary formatter based on a tutorial by, you guessed it, Brackish. And it seemed to work okay. And I added hard mode. As I've said, this just changes the delay. And I was ready to publish until I found every bug imaginable, oh god. It was Saturday. I woke up at 7 a.m. I had two and a half hours to fix the issues with the saving system, etc. But mostly the saving system. So I tried making a JSON file formatter. I tried and tried, and this didn't work. And so I had to resort to player preferences. The easiest of them all to implement, but I don't want to have to see this again. Well, uh, I mean, it works, that's the main thing. So five minutes before the jam ended, at 9.35 a.m., I submitted the project, Polygonotes, and it was over. Well, kind of. I was informed that the second song was broken. The shapes would display differently from the actual choice the game made, but luckily this actually happened one time. And I hope it doesn't happen again, but just in case, I put a warning up on the itch page. Well, that's it. My first game jam. And it sucked. Well, the link's down below. You can play it. And suffer. Like I did. Everyone subscribe to Doorbell Prod on YouTube.